Hi everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews. I'm Richard and welcome back to our series on horology. So today we're going to talk about another Amiga. You might have guessed that by the actual size of the box here. I cycle my watches, so I've been wearing this timepiece um, recently. But instead of taking it off my wrist and showing you, I thought I'd do the unboxing to give you a, a perception of how it actually was displayed when I received the item, when I received the timepiece. So I won't tell you what the timepiece is yet. I'll show you through the display system. So I'll do the unboxing. So first of all, we have Omega branded box in white, actually white cardboard. On opening up the box, you are revealed the Omega plastic box. Now, even though this is plastic, this is still a very well-made box, very well engineered, as you'll see when I take it out of the outer enclosure. There you have the surrounding box, typical packaging for Omega. Never do anything by halves. If you can put a massive box in for a little time piece, then why not? So let's open this up. I'll try and do this so you, the camera can see. And here you can see displayed the Omega Speedmaster Apollo 17 45th anniversary. Now this timepiece is the anniversary of the last of the last person landing on the moon and the last footsteps on the moon. The last person on the moon was Gene Senna. And this is uh, inscribed in the actual um, information here. I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a minute. So this is the Apollo 17 Speedmaster 45th anniversary. So this watch was released in 2018. I actually purchased it in March 2018. And this is to commemorate the last landing on the moon, which was in 1972. So if you date back from 1972, to 2018, or date forward to 2018, you'll see that that is actually 45 years. So this is the 45th anniversary of the last man setting foot on the moon. And that last man was Gene Cernan. So to give you some details of the timepiece, you have a ceramic cerachrome bezel, tachy tachymeter in effect, and you have a blue enameled dial, a beautiful blue enameled dial. And a blue enameled dial has certain writing on it. Now, because this is a limited edition watch, and this was to commemorate the last moon landing in 1972, there was 1,972 watches made for this actually edition. This is um, a certain one of those watches. I, I'm not actually sure which one it is, but it is labeled on the back. Um, unfortunately, um, it's where I, why I wear glasses, my eyesight isn't fantastic but that doesn't really matter. It's, it's one of the actual 1,972. And written on the dial, um, it has certain commemorative information and in red script, which I don't know if you can see it there, we'll be able to pick it up on, on one of the cameras, I'm sure. In red script, it actually says the time when Gene Sennon last set foot on the actual moon. And that time was 0534 Greenwich Mean Time. So that's 05.34 in the morning. Gene Senna set, he put his footsteps on the moon for the last time. That's the last time he visited the moon. Now, to give you some back history on my purchase of this watch, and then I'll go into some more detail about the box. I was consulting in London, and I saw the gold version of this timepiece. Now, there was a gold, gold edition of this timepiece, and there was a stainless steel edition. The gold timepiece was very limited. There was a very small number that were made, and it's in solid 18 karat gold. I saw that timepiece in one of the Omega boutiques in London, and I am denied about buying it. It was a lot of money, so I decided that I'd look for the stainless steel version. So when I got back from London, I had a hunt around, and it was sold out everywhere because it was actually in March 2018 when I was looking and the watch had been um, released, I believe, um, a month or two or a couple of months earlier than that, maybe February it was released. 
So I was, I was going to be very unlucky to find it because people have snapped it up because it was a very limited edition. There was only 1,972 of these steel versions actually that were actually made. So I hunted high and low on the internet and I happened to come across, I uh, came across a few websites that advertised the watch for sale, but when I called up, they actually weren't for sale anymore, they'd been sold. Um, and in my searches, I came across a jeweler's and um, it looked like the watch was still available. Of course, you couldn't tell because you know often when I called up, then they'd said it actually been sold. But I called up this jeweler's and they said, oh yes, it's, it's in the safe. We believe it's in the safe. I said, oh, well, can you just go and check please? Because I was very surprised. I thought, okay, they're gonna come back and tell me it's actually been sold. And they said, no, no, still in the safe. Yeah, we've got it. Um, they double checked and they said, yeah, it's got it. I said, okay, well, first of all, I'd like to buy it now, please. So I paid for it there and then. And I said, I, I asked them why they still had it available. And they said, well, it only just been delivered. They actually had only just received it into the shop because it was late delivery for them. So I just so happened to chance across their website just after the watch had actually been delivered into the boutique. Um, so I was just very, very fortunate that it, it, was, it was there and I managed to purchase it. it was just a pure stroke of, stroke of luck. So I managed to purchase it at retail. Um, beautiful timepiece. The reason I love this timepiece is because of the gold inlays, the gold battens. Um, so the, the battens are gold and the actual hands uh, have edging in gold as well. And there's, there's obviously it commemorates the 1972 moon landing. So you've got um, Apollo there and as well as alongside, so you've got an image of Apollo along with uh, imagery of the actual moon craft and moon landings. And you've got the certain um, artifacts like the actual chronograph hand has a red pigment, has a red dye on the actual very end, which is very unique. And you have gold edging to the actual hours and minutes hands as well. And of course the, the beautiful blue dial, the, the thing that really sold it to me was the beautiful blue dial. And when I did my research of the gold version against this, the, the reason why I decided to buy the stainless steel version was because there was a lot of similarities between the stainless steel version and the gold one. They had the same dial and the same baton markers were in gold, the same hands, etc. Um, it was the actual, just the case that was solid gold. Um, on That was the difference, it was a key difference. And the actual gold version was on a leather strap as well. So that's, uh, you know, you get a, it's really good bang for buck, this watch. It's, it was a very good, um, very good value for money. I bought it for 4,800 in 2018, and I believe now, you can't get hold of them, but I've, I've heard of them being sold secondhand for upwards of 7,000 to 10, 11,000 pounds. I commonly use this watch when I'm consulting on site because it's, um, it goes under the wire. It's, it's not an obvious high value watch. It's not, you know, what I would class as a very high value watch anyway, but it's not, it doesn't look like a high value watch. It's one that goes under the radar. Like I say, I wear it on a regular basis. Uh, this timepiece has the 1861 movement. Now the 1861 movement is a derivative of the movements that were used in the original moon landings for Apollo 11. And that movement was the 861. So the 1861, which is the movement in this timepiece, is a derivative of the 861. The only difference between the two timepieces, correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right, is that the 1861 is rhodium plated. Now, interestingly enough, there's few variations that were made on the 1861 movement. And one of those variations, for example, is the 1863. The 1863 movement is a more highly decorated movement than the 1861. Apart from that, it's the same. And the reason it's more highly decorated is because the 1863 is the movement that's used in clear case back versions of Omega Speedmasters. Therefore, of course, it's it's prettied up more. It's, it's decorated so it looks nicer through the clear case back. This model does not have a clear case back. You have some inscriptions, it details the limited edition. Obviously you have the serial number on the actual case here, on the lugs, on the back of the lugs, which is quite, which is which is how you make sure a lot of the time that the work, that the timepieces aren't forgeries. Um, and on the back of the case back, and on the case back you have a beautiful engraving of Apollo and variations that, did, that depict the actual 1972 being the last moon landing. The timepiece, the 1861 movement uh, that's in the timepiece has a, cam operated chronograph and a horizontal clutch. Now people talk a lot about column operated chronographs. Now column operated chronographs are what they call Hort horology or a variation of Hort horology because they take a longer time to design and they look nicer for a case back and you can feel a more de definitive click 
when you operate the chronograph because it's actually latching on a, on a point on a like a castle point if you like on the actual column wheel this is a cam operated chronographs now cam operated chronographs are actually a lot easier to maintain because they're cams that are laid on top of the timepiece and they're easier to unscrew and remove those cams for cleaning they're a lot easier than a column wheel the column wheels have to be developed a lot more accurately and they take a lot more machining um, whereas cam operated chronographs are, are a lot easier to make so they're cheaper to make and they're just as accurate with regards to their engagement and movements now this timepiece has what's known as a horizontal clutch which i alluded to a little bit earlier what that means is um, and i'll just put the timepiece on so again so you don't scratch it easiest way to make sure you don't scratch a timepiece is to put it on when you engage a, a horizontal clutch it means that the actual chronograph isn't engaged the actual chronograph mechanism isn't engaged but you've got the normal cogs and the normal hands of the timepiece which are normally moving round now you have a very coarse cut cog which actually engages with the small teeth of the actual timepiece so that so that when it engages because these if you think these actual cogs are continually spinning around and whereas this chronograph hand cogs these cogs that drive the chronograph hand aren't actually spinning around so these engage um, with the actual with the cogs of the timepiece um, to actually start the chronograph hand moving now if you, as you can imagine depending on when it engages if it if it doesn't quite catch the you know a tooth properly then it, it could flick and could flick the actual chronograph hand and that can be evident quite a bit and that is a common trait of horizontal clutch chronographs that the actual second hand will actually flick a little bit sometimes depending on how the cogs engage you don't get that with vertical clutch why well because the chronograph hand and the chronograph um, mechanism for a vertical clutch system is actually already moving so in effect you're just letting the hand go so it's very different with a horizontal clutch now a horizontal clutch chronograph when you engage the chronograph mechanism it will actually substantially start reducing the power reserve so it does use the power reserve quite extensively whereas a vertical clutch movement will because the cogs are already moving around in the, in the chronograph you're not going to add any impact to the power reserve when you engage a vertical clutch chronograph like for example in the Rolex timepieces when I say Rolex timepieces obviously I mean the Daytona and you've got as with I showed on my um, on the previous review that I did on my 50th anniversary chronograph Speedmaster, one with the black enamel dial, you've got a similar latch mechanism um, for the actual clasp, which is two, two actual buttons which release the clasp. So it's very secure, very well engineered, and very comfortable to wear. One of the other things you'll notice on the clasp is that I'm using protective layer on the actual clasp. I use this on all the timepieces that I wear and this is a little bit of what you call bike tape but in effect it's like um, like you have PPF on a car, it's a similar material and it protects the clasp from getting scratched when you're working as I do at a desk a lot um, and the clasp is actually hitting a table of some sort. And I always make sure that I put a bit of this protective um, film on every one of my clasps as soon as I get the watch, as soon as I get the timepiece, I always put it on the clasp straight away so as you're mitigating any scratches and it's just very hard wearing and uh, will not um, will ensure that the actual clasp doesn't get damaged. I'll probably do a video at some point with regards to the sort of material that you should use if you want to protect your clasp in that way and how you would actually fit it but it's quite straightforward. So let's move on to the actual box. Now, the inscription here in the actual box is the discussion that was had between Gene Cerner and Apollo Mission Control. Because it was the last moon landing, they actually, they actually decided to commemorate the actual discussion that was had between Gene Cerner and Apollo Mission Control in the actual covering and in the actual front faceplate of the actual commemorative box. Now, interestingly enough, there's actually a faux pas, there's a mistake in the actual inscription here, in the writing, and it's a very famous mistake. Instead of saying mankind in, a, in, a, in part of the actual text, it actually says man king. So it's a well-known mistake, and all these boxes, I believe all of the boxes, um, or most of the boxes, had the actual mistake. And it's supposed to make the box more valuable because it is actually a, a mistake that shouldn't have been there. I believe that you could have sent the box back and got it corrected, 
but nobody did that or you were stupid to do that because it actually makes the box more valuable. Two items are provided with the box. The cushion that is used to the actual display the timepiece, as you can see here, it says the actual landing date, which was December the 11th, 1972, as you can see here, which is a very nice little artifact to have. Very nice uh, little bit of a commemorative inscription. So yeah, Omega are very good at providing this sort of commemorative packaging. And this is a carrier for the actual watch for the timepiece but has another cushion inlaid which is in effect this actual same cushion and you can see on the sides as well it has the actual uh, details various other bits and pieces of details so it has um, on the on one side it says the actual date when the actual Apollo when the actual Apollo 17 craft was launched so it says launched December the 7th, 1972. That's, so that's the actual date of the launching of Apollo 17. So that's when Apollo 17 left planet Earth, as it were. And then you've got the return date on the other side, and it says returned December the 19th, 1972. And then as I've detailed before, landed December the 11th, 1972 on the main part of the cushion. And this is the same on this cushion as well has the same details so in effect it's the same cushion now you, you also i'll just pop this back this is obviously a travel case for the watch you can also see it even has an inlay in the bottom of the actual where the travel case is fitted so you should be able to see there the actual inlay that's in, at the bottom of the at the bottom of the hole where the actual travel pouch is held, where the travel case is held. Omega go that far to even decorate the bottom of the packaging, which you'll hardly ever see. In fact, I never even knew that was there until I just looked. So pretty impressive. Very impressive that Omega go to this sort of detail when they package their watches. It's phenomenal. It's really, really nice. Not that you ever use these packages. I mean, these packages, I put in a special place in the house and pretty much, you know, they never get used again. Um, I leave them, you know, they're kept in very good condition and pretty much, as I say, you know, they're just stored and uh, very, very infrequently opened up again. The only one I do open up quite a bit on my Omega packaging boxes is the 50th anniversary one because I actually do use the tools that come with that 50th anniversary. Um, if you want to see the review on my 50th anniversary Speedmaster then please check the details below. By the way, when you open this box, there's actually two buttons on the side. Again, a nice piece of engineering just for, just for the packaging. So you have to open up these, press these two buttons to actually open up the lid and they engage, the latches engage with these two sections here, these two points. So and I'll just close it again, as you can see. Nice pleasing cluck or nice pleasing click as it, uh, as it latches. So that's the review of the Omega Speedmaster Apollo 17 45th anniversary. I hope you enjoyed the review guys. Please let me know, drop some comments below. Please let me know if you like the review and if you'd like me to review some other timepieces or some other information with regards to horology, very pleased to do that as long as I can get hold of the timepieces to review. Obviously, these are the timepieces in my collection at the moment. If you like the review, please make sure you select like. It's very important for the good old YouTube algorithms. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And thank you to all my loyal subscribers. We're looking to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So please help us towards that end. A high proportion of our viewers actually aren't subscribed. So it helps us a hell of a lot, please. If you just click that subscribe button below, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And take care, especially in these unprecedented times. And we'll see you in the next video.